Hi Q, season two, episode twenty-three, the final match. Make their serves strong. Their serves are insane. I hate all of you. Every single, every single one of you. <laughs> For now. <laughs> uh, something I love about that. I love how you put that into like story terms. Damn right. Damn right. Man, something about Daichi's energy, it always just gives me chills. Oh, it's such a perfect setup. Because it's like, yeah, I believe in them. I believe in them. I've been predicting a victory since the start of this game. But the way the game has gone so far, it feels right now like Carson is kind of on their back foot. Alba Josa has the momentum. They've been doing what they do best, which is adjusting, adapting, using their tools really, really efficiently. Like I said, last episode, I think the, the key that gives me hope is that as well as they've been playing, Kageyama and Hinata's matchup hasn't been unlocked to their full potential, as far as what we've seen them be able to do. I think a lot of this is on Kageyama's shoulders, and that's kind of great too, because, you know, he's got that rivalry with uh, Oikawa. Episode 23, Team. <laughs> Oikawa. He's just so, so damn good. He's so hot right now. Stupid sexy Oikawa. Speaking of setter streaks. There it is! I've been waiting for that. Gotta love it, even though I hate it. This is not starting off great. That mad dog's fully warmed up. I see his credit, he just seems so in the zone. There we go, there we go. Kageyama. Okay, alright. <laughs> Needed that. Needed that one. Let's get some something on the board. Shut the hell up. There we go. Yeah, get him even more pissed off. Maybe he'll fall apart. Some people fall apart under the, the slightest frustration. We've seen characters do that in the show before. Alright, alright, alright. At least it's a close game. So much pressure, it's insane. Oh, damn! That curve. What's it gonna be? Like, it's... They're just both so evenly matched, they're both so close, they're both so good. What's the push gonna be that makes the difference? It's a really tough call. They're kind of in a dangerous spot doing this well, in a certain sense. It's great that it's evenly matched, and it could go in their favor, but it's kind of a, a gamble, right? Like, if you're this neck and neck, and you only win by one or two points, depending, you're not really in control of the game and the victory. You're kind of just hoping at that point. I don't know what it would be necessarily, but there's gotta be like some insight or some kind of change, some adaptation for the victory to really be solidified and not have it be just like hope that it's good enough. In a way, their success is a risk. You know, the fact that they're tying it up and just barely lagging at times. It doesn't demand that kind of insight necessarily. It doesn't demand like that kind of radical thinking, which is just true generally, you know, if things are good enough or comfortable enough, it's easy to kind of lose or lack that, the fire to give whatever that extra something is. It's tough though, because in this game, as some of the coaches have alluded to, so much of this is about serving. And I feel like with the serving, there's just, there's less room. There's less team room to play and innovate. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's uh, kind of terrifying. You gotta respect the guy. Save that one. I really wanted to see him get frustrated. Yeah, get him. Stop Mad Dog, you stop everything. Yes! Oh my god, that feels good. Watch him, watch him deteriorate. Yeah, say it louder so Mad Dog can hear it. Oh, he's getting in his head. That's awesome. Whoa, that's some crazy IQ right there. It feels really good for Tanaka to play a heroic role in this, too. He's always been the hero of this team, but like in a quiet way. Yeah, yeah, if Mad Dog starts to like get frustrated, get heated, take things personally, he's, he's weak, he's vulnerable. Oh, get him. Oh, please stop him. Oh! Wow. 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 Three in a row. Oh, that... Yeah, yeah, you got him. You got him. 
狙ってはないな。あれは。あ<笑><笑>、oh, yeah, he's, I mean, he's a beast. 月島がうまく利用したって感じです、ね。So he being sort of calmer, so to speak, has the emotional distance to notice. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I totally felt that momentum just shifting there. Coach is wise to recognize that. When I first saw Mad Dog come into this game, my initial feeling was that it might be their weakness. I also said I was surprised that they would use him at all, that it seemed like a lack of confidence. That I think was wrong. It, it wasn't a lack of confidence, it's actually confidence in Oikawa. But I think it might be true that Mad Dog, despite his insane talent, is a potential weak link. If they can weaken Mad Dog's powers and simultaneously turn up Hinata's powers with Kagayama, that would be the thing I was looking for, the thing I was, I was waiting to see. And flashback. <laughs> Oh, this is, this is an excruciating flashback because we're right in the middle of this game. Buni tokekome nai ke. Hankoki. Yoku team sports at the na. Are you trying to make me feel bad for him right now? Because I'm not about that life at this point. Why? Can't I just hate someone in peace? Like, I think I spent so much time in other shows trying to, like, get to the maximum humanity of people and, and feel it out. And I think at a very general level, that's true for me of this show as well. Like I've said a bunch of times, the game is less important to me than the human aspect of it. And I think the, the actual game, the bigger game, is their growth and their development and things that are relevant to just the human experience, as always. So, you know, I joke about Oikawa, but I like him a lot and I'm rooting for him in that bigger game. But, you know, at the same time, they're, they're playing sports, they're playing volleyball, and there's only going to be one winner. And so I have an in group. That That dilemma exists broadly as well. There's just general goodness that you wish for in humanity, but then there are your people. Ideally, those two spheres are aligned, but not always, right? There's sometimes I find myself rooting for my friends, or I would root for my friends at others' expense. If there's an area of life of competition, adverse or antagonistic competition, I want my friends to win, you know? Is it a limited perspective? Maybe. In this show, at least, the great news is they can lose the, the volleyball match and still win the bigger game, which is, you know, their, their lives. <laughs> I mean, it obviously means a lot to him personally. Hence all the overflowing emotions. He just always had that face. Softened right up when he saw that serve. He's chasing something. He's got a chip on his shoulder. It almost feels like survival for him, like emotional survival. Somewhere along the line, he painted a picture for himself. This was something like life or death. Yeah, he's losing it. It's falling apart. Interesting that Oikawa is still going to him. Oikawa is sending someone else to do his dirty work. He got subbed out. Smart. I get it, I get it though. Like, as someone who's very competitive, I understand the spiral you can go into, but they're not wrong. Yeah, speaking of the bigger game. It's pretty brave to have this conversation, but yeah, I think it needs to happen. I mean, it's kind of harsh, but I, I think it's actually it's a kindness. I mean, just to care about him at all. It's what he needs to hear. Yeah, even if the motivation is just winning. But I mean, he's asking him to do better, partly because he believes he can. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Team. Alright, I'm here for the growth, even though I'm terrified of it. <laughs> Maybe grow after you lose. Saw it. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the offense I was, I've been looking for. Another thing is like, I was expecting uh, Oikawa and Kagama's relationship and their rivalry to be a bigger feature this match, and that might happen later. But the way it was introduced at the start was actually the comparison and parallel of Oikawa and Daichi, I guess as the, you know, the leaders. And it's interesting to think about their two styles. Like Oikawa just sent another player to school Mad Dog. Daichi would never, you know, Daichi would never get someone to do his dirty work, one. And two, he has kind of the, this perfect approach that I love where he's strong, he doesn't tiptoe around anything, but he leans on praise and reward more than anything else. That's like his primary tool. And because he's so, so great and so amazing and you respect him so much, his giving you that attention and that praise is just so valuable. If I was in the team and Daichi told me great job because, you know, I scored a point, I'd be like, hell yeah, you know, motivation multiplier times 10. Praise is easy, you know, anyone can praise someone, but praise backed by greatness is just a whole other category. It's a lot of faith in him.
It is. Well, I'm grateful for that that point swing at least. That's huge in, in a game like this where it's so close, where they're so evenly matched. Do my. And uh, flashback continued. Clear area or opportunity for growth for him. That's not easy either. I don't mean to trivialize it. Yeah, yeah, it's actually pretty amazing for Moikawa. It's almost like a humanizing touch. Seems like he's just afraid of it, doesn't know how to cope with it. Oh boy. That whole exchange mean, meant a lot for all of them. They just cleared a lot of like pen up whatever out of the way. His discomfort with the pat, with the back pat. All that and we're still only up by one. Well, there's the praise. That also means a lot coming from Oikawa. You forgot handsome. It's funny how significant that one point was. Oh no, now he's like extra good up too. There we go, there we go. He's tied up again. Great, great, wonderful. Damn, what the hell? Thought that was a point. Yeah, Hinata is the like the one the biggest weapon not really being utilized so it's full. Efficiency. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been waiting for this. But credit to them, right? Like for a while they were basically only winning or largely winning because of Hinata. Now they're winning even though he's just sort of playing at a medium level. <laughs> I get it. Yes, indeed. I don't like it. I also love it. It's, it's confusing. Anything could happen. This might be Daichi's last game. Man, <laughs> just like getting such a sympathetic look this episode. One thing that makes me curious about though is it seems like the biggest insight Oikawa gave Kageyama and largely the reason for why they lost last time is that Oikawa's focus and talent is using the people around him to their maximum. Kageyama internalized that and has been doing a better job of that. But there's something else that might differentiate them which is the, the autonomy and the natural skill level of the person hitting the ball. So like right there in that flashback Oikawa told him don't change anything. I could be overreading, but it seems like the optimal thing for both Hinata and Kageyama is not either one of them but both of them together being in sync. Push it, yes. Huge breath of relief with Oikawa not serving anymore. Aww. You gotta think about this. This is the adjustment that needs to happen. Look at Hinata getting up there. <laughs> He's about to go over the net. Give it to him. Trust in Hinata. He can do it. It's beautiful. I like how that shows like how quickly that happened. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is it. I like, I was saying there needs to be some insider change for them to be able to not just rely on luck, you know, and just swing of the game, see who wins. Turns out there's at least two. The Mad Dog thing was great. That was an insight, but that didn't like really solve any problems. I mean, it's probably going to be critical to the game, but it's Awa Josai, you know, they adjust. They're fighting just as hard. It needs to be Hinata and Kakeyama, especially Kakeyama, I think. There's just too much narrative history and weight between him and Oikawa, and he's grown too much from Oikawa, amazingly. And it's a credit to both of them, you know, they're, they have this rivalry, and it's more than a rivalry, there's animosity. But nevertheless, they're able to grow from each other, or at least they, they respect each other, and Oikawa was nice enough to give Kagama advice in the offseason. That for me is actually pretty amazing, you know, you, you think you wouldn't want Kagama to grow, but I think a part of him does. It shows what he's made of, and that victory itself, just sheer victory is not the highest thing for him. I might feel bad for him after the match, after Carson secures their victory. I'll have the emotional space for that then.